This is the part two of the lecture on uh, fundamentals of protection. We did cover uh, uh, in the first part a uh, simple uh, electrical system, a three bus system, where we showed the generators, transmission lines, transformers, and also uh, the reactive uh, power devices. So in this uh, lecture, we will uh, look at uh, uh, how we make use of the relays, which we said will monitor the system for the healthiness and if it finds any abnormality or any short circuit in the system or in any equipment, it isolates that particular equipment as soon as possible. Uh, so the relay inputs what we talked about were currents with normal uh, nominal rating of 5. What it means is if the primary current is 2000 amperes and if we use a current transformers, we step down these 2000 amps uh, to 5 amperes on the secondary side of the transformer that is connected to the relay as an input. Similarly, we have a voltage input where we step down the primary voltages to secondary manageable values. Uh, for example, if you take a 230 kV, uh, 132 kV is face to ground which is 230 by square root of 3 uh, and then uh, we step down 132,000 volts to 66 volts and then we connect it to the relay as a voltage input. So the relays which need current input will have uh, secondaries of the CTs connected and then the relays which need voltage or, uh, or uh, if, uh, if it needs the voltage then we have the voltage secondary of the potential transformer or the voltage transformer connected to the relay. So if we have these two then we can easily measure the frequency uh, from the voltage waveform or the current waveform, but mostly we use voltage for that uh, purpose uh, because it is always available. And then the impedance is nothing but the ratio of the voltage to current. Uh, these are various uh, derived quantities which we use. So if we look at a, a protection scheme, if I have a fault in the generator, then I need to open only one particular breaker which isolates one breaker which isolates that generator. Similarly, if we have a fault in the transformer, we have to uh, open uh, the two breakers, one on the low side here and one on the high side here. And then similarly, uh, if you have a, a protection which is covering both the generator and the transformer, then we trip the high side of the transformer. That will be the breaker. And if we have a low side breaker, we can trip that too. Uh, you need to know that if the size of the generator is very big, it is very difficult to get a generator breaker. So the generators are directly connected to, to the transformer, step up transformer, and there will be only one breaker on the high side of the transformer. This uh, way of connection is called unit connected generators and then we call this protection unit protection. And similarly, if you take a bus, which is just a junction of three or four uh, um, equipment uh, connections here. If here we have a generator uh, and then uh, two transmission lines connected to a, a junction which we call bus. So what we do is we monitor the currents coming into the relay and coming going out to the relay. Um, so uh, the whatever current that is flowing into the bus and then what is flowing out of the bus. As you know some of the currents at any junction must be equal to zero. If there is a difference we know that there is a leakage or there is a fault or there's another path where the currents are flowing. So we trip the bus, or trip means we are opening the breakers uh, that is associated with that particular equipment. So similarly, if there is a fault on the transmission line, then we are going to open four, um, the, we are going to open uh, breakers at both ends of the line, uh, here as well as here. And then we have two uh, unit, uh, uh, devices here. They are called reactive uh, uh, wall devices. Uh, one is a shunt capacitor, other one is a shunt reactor. Under heavy loaded conditions, uh, there might be a voltage uh, that we may not be able to maintain the voltage within the normal operating range. So we need a reactive power to boost it up to keep uh, that voltage within that uh, normal specified range. Similarly, under light load conditions, if uh, with all the transmission slides connected, there is a tendency for the voltage to be higher than the nominal. Uh, acceptable or no, normal acceptable range under such conditions we put shunt reactors to pull the voltage down within the normal operating system. So if you look at it we have defined 
some zones of protection like for example if generator zone of protection is the one which opens only the breaker associated with the generator transformer uh, zone of protection covers the transformer and then if on a fault in a, for a fault in a transformer or an abnormality it opens breakers on both high side and low side similarly you have unit protection which opens on the high side line protection opens breakers on both ends the intent here is it uh, detects the fault and isolates only the faulted equipment so a zone boundary is defined by the fault interrupting device breaker in our example and then also the monitoring device uh, the the the, uh, the location of the current transformer let's take an example here we have the bus and we have the interrupting device and outside these interrupting devices we have uh, 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 current transformers and what we have done is we have connected them differentially we just add all the currents and then as I mentioned earlier the sum of all the currents at a junction must be equal to zero in this case uh, we can just connect all the CTs and uh, connect current transformer secondaries in parallel and when we connect a device which monitors the differential current this is the bus relay so if there is a fault then uh, then if there is a fault then there is a diff and all the currents will flow towards the junction and then we that is the tor some of the all the currents will be the difference current and that flows through the uh, coil of the relay which opens out all the breakers indicating that there was a bus fault now second aspect of this zones of protection is you need to have overlapping zones you don't want just to have a device uh, for example transformer just covering the transformer and not including these two uh, devices which are outside and similarly for a generator you don't want to have a seat connect a CT here on this side of the generator so if the fault occurs uh, or, or inside this uh, breaker then we may not be able to uh, say that it is a part of the generator uh, protection so if you look at it the generator protection and the transformer protection are um, they are overlapping so if there is a fault which is common to these two zones both the units will both the relay protection schemes will operate and then open uh, take corrective actions to isolate the faulted equipment and as an example if there is a fault within the generator breaker both the generator protection as well as the transformer protection operate and then take it out similarly if you look at the previous uh, uh, slide by which i showed you see that there is no area which does not have uh, uh, any overlap no zone which it does not uh, uh, follow this particular rule okay <clears throat> so now but uh, this is not always the case in the case of switch gear it is difficult to uh, fit in um, uh, current transformers on both sides of the breaker uh, uh, connections so under such conditions you put only on one side and also this is possible in EHV uh, extra high voltage where we use our high voltage systems where we use uh, live tank breakers that means you have the interrupter, the opening, the contact of the breaker on mounted on an insulator and then there is not much space to put current transformers on both sides. I have not shown you the pictures of the current transformers which we will be showing you in the instrument transformer uh, 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 lecture. So if you look at it in this case, if there is only the CT is only on one side of the breaker and that current transformer CT as I call it is used for bus protection as well as for the line protection and uh, the line is uh, this is the line here so if there is a fault in between the trans current transformer and the breaker this fault uh, it is within uh, this interrupting devices there uh, region so it has to be a bus fault we should consider that as a bus fault but in this case the the way the uh, uh, CTs are connected bus fault thinks uh, bus relay thinks that it is an external fault whereas the line relay which is kind of monitoring the current and the direction of the current which is towards the line thinks that it is a line fault and opens only the line breaker the line tag breaker associated with that particular line but the fault is not clear so under such conditions you need to make sure that uh, <coughs> you have to trip both zones if there is a fault within the, in the blind zone okay so this is a solution and modern relays uh, what they do here is uh, they they as soon as the breaker opens 
as soon as the live tank breaker opens here, they take away the current which is uh, uh, which is accounted in the bus relay. So if this current becomes zero, the sum of these two currents is not equal to zero, then the bus relay also operates. This is one of the methods that is used. Uh, changing zones of protection. Sometimes it is uh, important for us to figure out how we can get equipment for maintenance. For example, if this GSU, the unit uh, connected uh, generators breaker has a problem, you don't want to lose generation. So what we do is we put a bypass. We take the outage of the whole bus, uh, whole system, and, all, and then we put a bypass jumper across the breaker and open out the isolators and then allow this breaker to be maintained or if there is a problem, you can get it fixed. So under such conditions, now for a unit connected uh, the protection, the breaker which was operating was this. But now, because that is not available, we have to make use of these two, two and three breakers for operating, for isolating faults in the unit connected uh, 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 generator uh, that is at fault in the transformer or the generator and also on the bus. So if you look at it here, we expanded the zone of protection from uh, from the generator breaker, the uh, unit connected breaker to two and three. What it is is we are connecting the relays uh, to the CTs associated with the breaker two and three for monitoring the current uh, uh, in this. Now we, we have to do this and also as I mentioned in lecture one, you have to initiate the breaker failure. What is that initiate means? You uh, your, There is a breaker failure relay which is monitoring whether the breaker tripped when it was called upon to trip. Trip means when it is called upon to open, that the breaker opened. So the primary protection relay gives an open command or a trip command to the breaker and then it also tells the breaker failure relay that I sent a trip command to the breaker monitor. So the breaker failure relay monitors the current and uh, looks at whether it got um, the uh, command to trip. That that uh, that is called initiate, and then it starts a timer, and the breakers are supposed to operate in two to three or five cycles. And if it is not operated in that particular time, wait for some time, which is called the breaker margin, you know, which, uh, which we can wait for a few more cycles and then uh, declare that uh, breaker as a failed breaker and open out the adjacent uh, sources. Other names which are clearly used here is merge price protection, unit protection or differential protection. <coughs> it is not always true that we have a very clearly defined zone. For example, on a transmission line it is impossible or uh, it, were, it is not, I should not say impossible, uh, in transmission line protection, it is a lot easier for us to monitor the local parameters, the voltage and the current, and make a decision whether there was a fault on the line or not. So instead of uh, communicating from, uh, waiting for the communication from the remote end, we can make a decision based on the local parameters of voltage and current. And in this case, we are looking on uh, a 100 mile line, long line, so we are not sure whether the fault was on the line or whether the fault was on the bus at the remote end. So there is an uncertainty in these case of open-ended uh, uh, measurements. The other one is the current where we are monitoring the current on a transmission line, for example, if the rating is 2000 amps, suddenly it goes to 10,000 amps. I know that the current is going on this, but we cannot uh, locate where the fault is, whether the fault is in front of the line, breaker at the remote end or behind that breaker. So under such conditions, we have to use time coordination or judgment to see how much, uh, how far we can go on the transmission line to make sure to know exactly that this has to be a fault on the transmission line and take corrective action. These are the zones where the zones are not clearly defined. Now let's look at the breaker operation for faults at various fault locations. Uh, the generator one, we know that we have to open the breaker one and then GSU, we are opening breaker one and two. And if that breaker fails, so one number fails here, we are opening breaker two for a generator fault. And in the case of one and two, if two fails, then I know that I had to open three and five. And, uh, you know, one failure, it doesn't matter because uh, as soon as one fails, if you open this, you have isolated it from the rest of the system. So I have gone through this here and looked at all the scenarios of uh, uh, you know, operations of the breaker 
and what happens if that particular breaker fails. For example, if you take a bus protection here, I should have operated breaker 2, 3 and 5, but if 3 fails, I have to make sure that I send an information to the remote and telling that breaker 3 failed for a bus fault and I have to open this breaker 4. So the relays essentially detect short circuits or abnormal conditions and take corrective actions by isolating equipment to prevent damage. Okay. The, now let's look at the measuring principles of this. We have the voltage and the current. So we look at the over voltage or under voltage situations or the rate of change of voltage or current, over current, under current or rate of change of current. Phase angle is, uh, is used where we want to know whether the fault was on the transmission line or behind if we are monitoring a transmission line. How do we do this? We look at the phase angle relationship between the voltage and the current and then make a decision on whether the power was flowing in the forward direction or reverse direction. What is power? V times I times cosine of the phase angle between voltage and current and if we, that is positive then I know the fault is uh, the power was flowing to out uh, towards uh, the line on the line and if it is negative that means the power was flowing in. This is just a convention of positive and negative but we use Vi cos phi to determine the directionality. So we, uh, then the other one derived quantities we covered before voltage to uh, current ratio we always gives me the impedance. Frequency we can check the over frequency or under frequency magnitude or rate of change of frequency. Volts per hertz is another really a parameter which we use for uh, protecting transformers where the voltage to frequency ratio is always constant. It is k times the flux density in the transformer. If that ratio increases, the flux density increases in the transformer. So there is a tendency for the transformer core to saturate and that results in overheating. We also use the harmonic content in the sinusoidal waveform of um, the, the current and when determining whether when we, were, we are energizing a transformer where we see 8 to, uh, 8 to 16 times the rated current as an inrush current and then we differentiate between the inrush current which is energizing a magnetizing magnetic core or whether it is a fault. So we, we look at the harmonic content of this particular waveform and make the decision. There are relays which make use of the wave shape of this and then make a decision on uh, the, whether it is a fault or an inrush condition. So relay classifications, if we look at it, we have electromechanical, static and numerical microprocessor based relays. Uh, I have not put in any uh, uh, figures. In the next lecture uh, series of slides, I will show you different types of electromechanical relays. Please go on an internet and then uh, just type in these and you will see how uh, they look at it. I was not sure whether I can just copy some pictures and then put it in here. Uh, relay chronology, electrical and electromechanical relays, they were significant portions still in service. Uh, about 50% of them are still in uh, our electromechanical relays in this modern era. Uh, major developments were always in 1950s uh, that was there and then after the invention of transistors in 60s, we got uh, solid state versions of the relays. And then we have op amps and CMOS technology which came in early 70s. And then the invent, uh, um, the invention of the microprocessor relay led us to design the relays uh, as late uh, in late 70s and early 80s and it is still continuing. We, what we use now is only digital relays which has a lot more technology. Just a point here before uh, I, we will cover this later also, electromechanical relays or single function relays and then uh, they had only a single phase current it monitored. So we needed three of these for A, B and C and then multifunction solid state relays combined two or three functions into one and op amps and CMOS were able to combine a lot more. Microprocessor will do a lot, lot more of this. We will cover this at the end of the lecture. Electromechanical relays, we have telephone type relays, hinged orbital relays, clapper, plunger, induction disk and induction cup. As I mentioned to you, Please look at uh, C.R. Mason's book. He covers it very well in for chapters 1 and 2 on this. And then he gives you the discussion and then operating mechanism of this. A telephone relay is an attracted armature relay. You have a coil. As soon as you uh, pass current through the coil or energize it with the voltage, the flux uh, which is developed uh, pulls the magnetic uh, attract armature and then closes. And the contacts are, are connected to these uh, moving portion of this that closes the car path in the circuit which trips 
the breaker. Uh, tripping, as I mentioned, is always opening the breaker. And uh, yeah, these are different types. Please look at in the, on the internet. Now let's look at the concept. Uh, what how what will be the what current we get during fault conditions and what will be the nature of the voltage uh, during fault. We have a relay location and I have just said that whatever that is behind the relay has got an inductance and resistance and we have put that there is a voltage source which is the one because of which we get a fault current and then if it is a transmission line you have got a RL and LL the resistance and reactance of the transmission line. So now we, this is a simple equation and then you have done the circuit analysis this has got an inductor and a resistor circuit um, in a, with a voltage source. If you solve the equations, you get uh, the current uh, equation which has got a steady state value which is sinusoidal and then you have got a transient uh, the, uh, unit which is a DC portion which is associated with that. Similarly, the voltage also has uh, uh, the same kind of equation. It has got a, a steady state the sinusoidal uh, term and then it has got a DC but the only difference between the current and the voltage is that there is an additional factor here sine of phi L minus phi where phi L is uh, the line angle which is in front of the relay which is nothing but L omega omega is 2 pi times F the frequency divided by R uh, the uh, tan in tangent inverse of L omega L divided by RL and then the phi is the same uh, which is the total system angle which is given by uh, omega uh, and total inductance which is uh, ls plus lr uh, ll and then the resistance is rs plus rl so if you take the whole system angle and if you just take the line angle here that is the difference between these two so the dc sinusoidal exponentially decaying component of the current, uh, voltage uh, will have an additional term just mind this uh, so we will discuss about it. So if you look at it any inductor does not allow sudden change in current. So if you look at uh, this then at time before uh, the fault there was no current so as soon as the fault occurs still there should not be current at T0 equals 0 plus. So uh, if you look at the sinusoidal steady state where the fault occurred at uh, this particular angle theta so now if you look at it you can plot the sinusoidal term from the previous equation and then you have the exponential term which is going in the opposite direction. So whenever a fault occurs uh, even though the steady state seems to tell you that current should, uh, should jump from 0 to this particular value here uh, what happens is uh, that it produces a DC offset to oppose this so the current always starts from the pre-fault value here we assumed it as no load condition. So it starts from pre-fault and then it uh, gets added on and this is the resultant current. So you have, you see that the uh, uh, current waveform always has a DC offset, okay. And the offset depends on the fault incident point of the voltage waveform. And then the line angle typically is 60 to 85 degrees, it could be higher than that. And generators are highly inductive devices where the inductance of a generator ls in our example is much higher than this so it has got a ratio of uh, uh, a tangent of uh, that uh, of omega l divided by uh, r will be about 100 if i take that and if you take the inverse of that it's about 89 degrees or 88 degrees i've given it as 80 to 87 then overall system angle is 65 to 80 degrees i have given but it could be how much higher than that 87 so if you look at this, I mentioned to you the voltage has got an, <coughs> an added term multiply for the DC offset which is sine of phi L minus phi. Phi, phi is the system angle and then phi L is the line angle. So most of the times at the EHV systems, these two angles are, uh, almost, are, almost say, are, are almost equal or sometimes they are same. If it is same, it is called a homogeneous system. If it is not, it is very close to each other. So that sign of that particular small angle is very low. So voltage waveforms rarely have any DC offsets, whereas in the current waveform, which, uh, which has got a multiplier of sign, which depends on the angle of incidence of the fault, uh, has a DC offset depending on where the fault occurs on a voltage waveform. Okay. The effect of DC offsets, as I mentioned to you, telephone type relay, 
it operates on the peak flux which is uh, uh, you know uh, uh, through uh, uh, which is generated by the current flowing through the coil so the peak flux is directly proportional is, uh, is dependent on uh, the dc plus the ac component so it has a tendency to operate under transient conditions so it is not uh, it doesn't reach up to suppose if you say that you have set it up to 100 amperes if you get a dc offset with uh, 200 amps as a peak it does certainly operate even for uh, you know uh, if it is 50 amps with a dc offset of 50 amps it, it's 100 amps it operates at 50 amps of ac also under that but we have other devices induction cup uh, device as i mentioned here you can look through the internet and those have uh, better uh, uh, they don't interact and they give a better uh, uh, restraint a transient uh, they have a better performance transient performance for dc offsets static uh, relays used filters and microprocessor based relays I have given an example of one of the manufacturers here. There are four samples per cycle. One cycle is 16.66 milliseconds, which is 1 over 60th of a second. 60 is the frequency. And then we take four samples per cycle. It is x1 minus x2 minus plus x3 minus x4. So you are adding and subtracting the DC component. So they are automatically it gets uh, the effect is reduced here. We also have other designs where we use the transformer reactors. These are transformers with air, air gap in the core and then that produces the DC offset. As we covered some of these overcurrent uh, relays based on functions, overcurrent relays are there. Differential relay just looks at the current coming into the bus and going out of the bus or current coming into the transformer which is compensated by the uh, scale down uh, for the voltage and then uh, uh, that is coming in whatever that uh, power coming into the transformer is convert compared with the power going out but we just use the current which is scaled down to the voltage level <coughs> directional relay we cover distance relay also we covered in the previous lectures uh, in the industry we instead of telling it is a distance relay or the directional over current relay or or under frequency relay over frequency relay they have numbers allocated for these c372 IEEE covers a lot of these numbers. So if you look at it, uh, then 2 is the time delay relay, 21 is the distance relay, 27 is under voltage relay, 50, 51 instantaneous. You can look at this uh, particular standards for that. So the system layout is required. Now let's look at how we want to put, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, how we want to design a protective scheme for a particular substation. Uh, for example, you need to know the layout you need to know the breakers locations and also you need to know the CT locations where because breaker and CT are the ones which define the zone of protection. Okay, Then you have to find, figure out what happens if the relay fails. You need a primary relay or a secondary relay or do you provide a backup in case one relay fails which is not at the same location. Make sure that there are no blind zones. Okay, <clears throat> One line diagram is generally used because it is a three phase system. We just show how the connections are made on a single line uh, and then they show primary and secondary current and with, and also they show if the relay uh, now detects an abnormality or a fault, what breakers are, put, uh, uh, are tripped. The alternate names for this are metering and relaying diagram and based on that, this is based on the past protection and practice. No two utilities are the same. Each one has their own way of, uh, you know, of uh, indicating uh, how these relays uh, are connected and uh, what they are going to operate in case if it uh, detects an abnormality. Okay, Then uh, this is called the metering and relaying diagram. I have abbreviated this as MNR. It provides uh, what protection is used and shows which breakers are tripped and serves as a good reference document for the develop uh, your three line diagram which is used for building a substation. Okay, Here is an example where I am showing the uh, protection here. Suppose if I take this, these are two breakers connected directly to your distribution transformer and on the low side you have a third breaker here. So you see that these two CTs and then the CT on this side, we form, call it a, with a bus protection, I have shown only primary and if that operates, I open uh, breaker 1, breaker 2, breaker 3 and also I send a command a notification to the breaker failure relays telling that I sent a trip command. We call this as initiate breaker failure initiates. I have shown some of these, and for a transmission line, I need a potential. So I have uh, which is monitoring the distance elements. 
uh, which is impedance measurement. It is, um, it is doing the impedance measurement. So I have voltage and current. I have shown only two of these. Uh, I only I have shown, uh, shown uh, the redundancy here, but I have not shown the primary and secondary relay for most of the other cases. So uh, in the <coughs> metering and relaying uh, for a distribution feeder, I have shown a microprocessor-based relay. It does not have a single function. It has got a lot of multiple functions. 50, 51 is a time over current, and then it has got an under frequency, which is 81, which is doing the load sharing to balance uh, the, the deficiency in the load uh, in the generation. You take away the loads, and it also does the metering, ampere and amp demand, and watts and watts. And then it has got a remote close input. 79 is reclosing uh, for transient faults on the feeder. Okay. What has changed in protection? Electromechanical relays for single function relays. So depending on the voltage level, we were trying to put more number of boxes or less number of boxes because the cost was directly proportional to the number of units uh, electromechanical relays we used. So the design varied from either uh, uh, just using single protection on a 13.8 kV feeder to using three uh, uh, protections on 500 kV or higher. Whereas solid state technologies, uh, so the cost was uh, uh, directly proportional to the level of uh, redundancy you needed and the importance of the circuit. Solid state technologies combine two or three functions, whereas in microprocessor based relays, we have so many other functions. And the latest technology is wide area protection, synchrophasers, and interoperability. In the microprocessor based relays now, uh, we can put all of them together, uh, all the func functions in one box and then we can use two boxes. This is called the integrated protection where I can use two computers which is protecting the whole circuits and then just uh, provide a redundant uh, computer also. Latest technology is wide area protection where I'm taking um, that communication has evolved so much that we can get information from Canada for example to uh, uh, you know to US side from for example uh, and then a much, a much faster speed and we can take corrective actions if there is a disturbance in a Canadian uh, system which is flowing down and then before it comes and affects systems in the uh, United States. Uh, similarly, the other way also, if there is a problem in the United States, we can take corrective actions to isolate those uh, you know, from affecting uh, uh, you know, places in, Can in Canada. So we have got wide area protection which is monitoring this synchrophrons. Interoperability is 61850. It is an IEC standard where any type of relay uh, can communicate with any other manufacturer relay and they use a common language, universal language now, which is uh, divine, defined by IEC 61850. Okay. What is slow to change? Because uh, the people have been doing the same type of work for many years. They don't want to change because they're afraid that some change will crea create uh, unnecessary tripping. So they are all based on the past experience. Majority of them are still electromechanical relays. So sometimes they use multifunction relays and use only one function of that pipe. And then they, they use uh, two or three boxes to uh, replicate single functions. The cost of implementing new concepts is easy, but the problem, the learning curve is so steep. Sometimes you get opposition from the people who are maintaining and operating the system. <coughs> Relay designs are mostly based on past experience. There are many ways to provide redundancy, local or remote. Unlike physical layout designs, different solutions may not have significant cost impact. The cost of uh, just prote providing protection, as I know, as of today, I think is about 67% or 78% or 8% of the total cost of the project, even if it is very complicated. So uh, you, you can easily modify and then take care, and it is more of an art than a science. I hope uh, you got most of these uh, very well. Uh, you can review and then you can look at uh, Mason's uh, chapters one and two, and also network protection and automation guide. Um, and also, as I mentioned, you have IEEE reference books. Please go and look at them. And if you want to look at how the relays look, uh, for, for, for example, induction cup or induction disk, uh, internet is a great place where you can really see how the relays look at it. Other terms used are sensitivity, selectivity, reliability, and security. These are defined in uh, 
uh, so reliability is that when you are supposed to operate when you are needed to operate but it is okay to operate when you are not supposed to operate whereas uh, security is you are not supposed to operate when you are not supposed to and then but uh, so <coughs> there are different uh, uh, levels so sometimes you tend to be more reliable or dependable I should say reliability is both really dependable and uh, uh, secure uh, I should say dependability is when you are called upon to trip you should trip when you are uh, not called upon to trip uh, you should not trip that is security uh, these are very important now and these are terms which are well defined and there is a lot of industry and uh, the material available on this you can look at the masons how it defined in 1956 I can go and look at it now okay other functions are auto restorations most of the faults in nature uh, on the transmission lines are temporary and uh, we tend to disconnect the system as soon as the fault occurs and then reclose and then restore the systems or if there is a breaker failure we isolate that breaker and then restore the system around that these are very widely used I hope this was uh, useful and uh, uh, please uh, go through these books and uh, uh, that provides all the answers